All right, so Jesus. Volume was just being a bit awkward. It was jumping between like freaking 10 and like 99. I guess it's it's fine though. So, but yeah, we're just continuing on, you know. Um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna try and see if we'll go for a, go if we can get a secret cutscene. Um, the most interesting thing is that in the previous part we've read specifically Lane's uh, diary entry thirty, right, the one we're on right now, and. Basically, it was just her talking about how much she hates Toko. And then in the next one, it reveals that they had some kind of falling out, which is interesting because it checks out and lines up with Toko requesting not to or to no longer uh, counsel Lane, right? Or no longer have Lane be her like a client. And then her potentially considering just putting in, you know, a letter of resignation, just resigning from her position in general so we still don't know what happens i assumed there would be some sort of lab but it, it doesn't seem to be that way um I, I don't want to go over and look into the next lane diary entry because i feel like i'd spoil it so i'm just gonna go through the next labs even if i need to go up just because it's like i'm genuinely curious as to what happened it's like because it, it seemed like literally just day and night like just within this seems like within the span of just one session they went for like they it was a complete 180 so it's just something to where again you know at least in terms of that right it's just interesting to uh interesting to think about there so anyway right that's just it's like yeah i mean the big thing there is just that yeah because it's like i mean we we knew it would come down to this at some point right i mean things were just going too well right i i hate to say it. it's something to where you know like this isn't a game or like you know a series to where things go well and there's a happy ending right like let's put it that way you know uh yeah it's just something to where it's interesting to think about but because it is something to where it's like, you know, what would you call it? Um, Because obviously in the show, you know, like in this particular, because of the lack of kind of the wired is like an influence, which again, like I said, is part of the reason why I think I enjoy this better Um, is because the focus is way more on kind of the story and like, you know, the development progression of like Lane's character in relation to, you know, other characters right so it's again it's just something where it's like looking at it that way right you know the big thing there is uh yeah this is seems to be a very pivotal moment in kind of again kind of the uh, moment to where everything starts to go south and it starts to head you know in a downward uh in a downward spiral right i'm not sure we're gonna get this uh i'm not sure we're gonna get this uh this cutscene, but again you know but yeah so i'm i'm going to ignore it um i'm i don't want to do this cuz i don't want to get spoiled i want to see if there's another lab cuz there's just i mean yeah it's, there doesn't seem to be another lab for quite some time so except one up there which definitely is not you know maybe we need to get read the diary first and then we'll get the uh, lab that's my thinking but At least we'll seemingly figure out what happened. ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっ
and we've been saying this the whole time, Telco doesn't really have anything, right? You know, and Lane's kind of starting to realize, I think that, you know, that she really doesn't have anything, right? You know, that she's not really doing anything. I mean, she's saying like, Rand, you know, it's not like keeping a dialogue, a diary is a bad idea, but it's more so, again, she's like realizing that like, this isn't going to, you know, change, right? You know, she has nothing to write in her diary. You know, she still doesn't, you know, eats alone at recess and lunch, right? And then still doesn't have, I guess, friends outside of maybe like Tomo and Kyoko, right? Well, I guess she had a falling out with Kyoko, but well, at least she has Tomo, right? You know, but it's like, again, and this also raised the question because this may be, you know, it's questionable whether this is Lane, like innocently or like, I guess, evil, quote unquote, Lane, whether it's her actual self or her sort of doppelganger. But again, it, it's something where it seems like she's finally caught on that in I mean, I assume it comes to, I mean, we see a ton of, you know, diary entries uh, coming up, but something where maybe, you know, again, uh, this like Lane maybe like calls uh, Toko out on it, right? Because again, we, we've been saying this for quite a while, Toko doesn't really have anything. So, and then that's kind of what leads to Toko realizing just the extent of her failure, right? And requesting to potentially change clients and or just straight up not have like Lane anymore because it's like, and then this is what, 33? We're on 31, right? Oh, what's this? Hold on. Let's let's watch this movie first. Or did we watch this already? I think we did. And then again, yeah. This yeah, we did. Because this is the meme one, right? The one I always see fucking memed. And they just put some random shit on the computer that looks like Lane's typing. But again, so it's interesting, right at about this time of um, her kind of having that, I guess, realization is when she gets, like, again, more involved in the, uh, what would you call it, um, is when she becomes more involved with the, uh, her Navi, right? So, and we got, like, quite a few Lane Diary entries coming up, so it'll be interesting to see. I guess this confirms that this confirms that the whole, you know, what would you call it? Um, the whole thing is about a Tomo, right? And then seems to be some weird, doesn't even seem to be a love triangle, more than just a misunderstanding, right? To where it's like, again, people think that you know, was it her and then Tomo are going out, right? And then Kyoko, you know, is jelly, right? You know, the typical, you know, like middle school fashion. But the problem we know is how fragile Lane's kind of, what would you call it? You know, how kind of fragile her emotional state and mental state is. So something like that, which, you know, normal people would be able to get over, right, is going to have a big impact on her, right? And I mean, we see the movie, so it's seemingly something to where she is the falling out with Kyoko, but she still stays in touch with Tomo, and that's where, you know, she gets very, and I mean, because originally, let's look at, and the, our interesting thing is, again, she doesn't want to go to school anymore, right? I mean, graffiti on her desk, she, you know, she's no longer friends with Kyoko, like, versus, it seems, it's like, just a few, you know, like, entries ago, right? She was couldn't wait to get back to school, right? So. Again, it's just interesting to know and think of there, right? Because it's something to where it's like, I mean, if she doesn't want to go, then they're like, what's the point, right? Like, you know, she has nothing there. And that's presumably the motive and reason for her getting so into her navy. So, again, it's just, it's really interesting. It's really uh, interesting there. So, also just the fact that there's so many entries before the next lab, So again, what's interesting is a couple of things. Well, a Kami is obviously the teacher, so she was talking with them about it. But again, it's also something to where it's like, you know, even though she is the teacher, right? Like, it's interesting that she's actually like noticed and caught on to kind of, you know, what's going on with Lane, at least it feels like, or at least that she 
cares enough or puts in, you know, enough effort to like reach out to, you know, her parents, right? Like that shows that, okay, she's not being completely ignored and just forgotten by her, um, at least her teacher. And then again, the other thing being that like, if Lane is actually like skipping class versus being sick, because you'd think, you know, someone like Lane, like, like if they're a good student, you know, they wouldn't do that. But obviously if there's nothing left there for them, right. And doesn't want to go to school, then you know, no reason not to. And it's also something, again, it always raises the question of, okay, is this her doppelganger, right? Or is it just, you know, her actual self, probably her actual self, you know, just not wanting to go given everything that's happened. And again, the interesting thing being, again, that movie, go back to a movie. This is about the time when she gets, you know, super Hindu or Navi. So it's like, Again, you know, interesting to know. And then obviously your parents like, you know, but it's also something to where I hate to say it, they just can't really do much about it. You know, it's just one of those things to where they just inevitably can't do like much about it. So at least in their uh, situations. So I guess we'll kind of see. I mean, it's it's a hot minute before she has another session. So Okay, this is very interesting. One, again, the fact that her dad took off work to basically spend the day, you know, with her and then talk to her, right? Like, it shows that, because, like, in the show, right, you know, her mom's kind of a deadbeat, right? And her dad, you know... I think her dad's a pretty, like, decent dad in the show, but it also, again, it, like, it's not apparent whether or not they're her actual parents or not, a parent, right? It's not obvious whether they're her actual parents or not, you know, it's not like, you know, again, you know, it's not obvious, so it kind of raised the question there, but for, in this, we're pretty sure they're her actual, you know, parents, so that's, you know, that's good on her dad, right? Shows that he's an actual good parent and cares, right? Well, that she is caring parents that, you know, love her and want to help her get through this, right? So. Again, you know, him specifically taking time out of his work day to talk to her, right? Like, it really goes show that. And then along with that, you know, bringing up the possibility of transferring schools and I guess possible for her to transfer the one that Tomo goes to, right? Who is kind of her last friend in a sense, right? Because again, you know, her falling out with Kyoko was all over Tomo, funny enough, right? But again, it's like, you know, like again, you know, that's, that's something to where it's like, it would be a... Uh, it would be something to where, again, you know, would, uh, what would you call it? Uh, I mean, that wouldn't be too bad of an idea because if there's nothing left for her at this school and if she's ditching, right, you know, not going to class, like another school to where, again, she's kind of, I guess, brand new, right, you know, and she has kind of that opportunity, I guess, well, to start over, but also, again, the one that has her, one of her last friends in it, right, like, if this happens, you know, that'd be, a, I'd say that's no doubt a good thing, so. But I guess we'll see, uh, we'll see, so. Okay. 